Hi YouTubers, my name is Kevin and you're watching the Royal We Nightly Discussions. Tonight I want to answer one of your questions because I think it's important to talk about what is important to you. So keep those questions coming in the comment section down below. You never know when your question will be on the Royal We Nightly Discussions. Now tonight's question comes from Fee Fox. Fee Fox writes a question in the comment section of a recent upload about why it's important to stop chasing toxic relationships and toxic narcissist. Now, you can find the link to that video down below in the description box or it should be floating around here somewhere. Now, to give you a background of what the video is all about, I make the case of why it's so important that we stop chasing toxic relationships, but more importantly, I make a case as to why I believe we chase after toxic relationships mentally and emotionally, trying to reconcile these relationships. And it's not because we want to be with them. Let's be honest, we have, want nothing to do with their lifestyle. We don't want to be a part of their slander, name calling, lying, cheating, stealing, drugs, alcohol, perverseness, whatever the hell they're doing. We don't want anything to do with it. That's not why we are chasing the toxic relationship. I believe the reason that we are chasing these toxic relationships and chasing narcissists is because we're trying to prove something to ourselves. And I make the case that what we're trying to prove to ourselves is we're trying to prove to ourselves that we are capable of good love, that we are loving people. Why do we need to prove this, this to toxic relationships? Well, the reality is, is when you are involved with toxic people, they do so much damage over time to your sense of self-worth that you lose your identity and your own sense of how good and capable you are of being a loving person. It just happens over time as they criticize you and call you selfish and judgmental and tell you all kinds of craziness about yourself. Really, it's all just diarrhea out of their mouth, but it really causes you to question your own ability to love. So to compensate for this, you make it a plan to prove to yourself and to them that you are capable of love. In fact, we overcompensate in this trap that we're in to try to find perfect love. And the reality is, is no perfect love exists on this earth. There is no such thing as perfect love. But what we do is we draw from our most reasonable understanding of what perfect love can be. And this is a problem because one of the understandings that we have of perfect love comes from modern Western Christianity. And it's this concept that God and Jesus chases people. That's part of what their love is. They call it reckless love over at Hillsong, chasing people into their hellish decisions. God will chase people into whatever horrible things they do. Therefore, we must chase toxic, abusive people as well. And that would be the perfect image of perfect love. I made the case in the video that God does not chase people. God is not a respecter of people. God does not need people. Therefore, God does not chase anybody into their hellish decisions. What I believe and what the Bible says is that God offers an invitation that's open for anyone who has ears to hear. Do you have ears to hear right now? If the invitation is open, you must then turn from your wicked ways, repent, take the invitation, and then you reconcile with God. That is how it works. God is not running around chasing people. That's bogus nonsense. We got to get that stuff out of our minds because this gives people permission to live however the hell they want to live. How many of you know narcissists right now who are running around doing horrible things but saying, I've got God on my side. At least I got God on my side as they're divorcing people and beating people. Whatever. It's nonsense. That's the danger. We don't want to be like that. These people don't have God on their side. Period. End. All right. God is not with you in your sinful life, but he is there with an invitation for you. And this is a part of the question. So Fee asks, let's get into her question, right? Before I run out of time here. Fee's question is a great question. She says, Kevin, in the message you talked about God not chasing people. However, in the story of the prodigal son is what she's referring to. There's a story of the son who leaves the father and he squanders away all of his wealth and he lives in filth and then he comes back and the father receives him and fee asks she says in this way i feel as though god never really leaves can you please talk about the difference 
and I am more than happy to, Fee. I think it's a very brilliant analogy. So what she is referring to is the parable that was spoken by Jesus in the book of Luke in the ancient texts of the Bible. Now Jesus gives this parable, and let's get a little bit more descriptive about the actual parable. It's about uh, two, two brothers, and one of them goes to the father and says, give me my inheritance, I want to go. He leaves and goes to a different country. He ends up squandering away all of his inheritance. A famine strikes where he's at. He's poor, he's starving, literally, according to the parable that Jesus is saying. And then he says to himself, I had it so much better when I was with my father. So he makes it a plan, and this is important to understand, in his heart to reconcile. He makes it a plan to say, I will go back and I will say, I have sinned against my father. I have sinned against heaven. I am not worthy to be your son in hopes that I can get back on the path where I once was. And so he does that. He ventures back. And in the parable, Jesus says that the father runs to him with open arms when he sees him coming back grabs him and hugs him, and he says that to his father. I have sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven. I'm not even worthy to be your son. And with that, the father says, let's celebrate. My son was lost, but now he's found and welcomes him back and has this big old hoopla. It's a fantastic story. It's a beautiful analogy, and I believe it's what it looks like for you and me as we come out of toxic situations and relationships that we had no business being in. Now watch, and I will talk about the difference because Fee asked, what's the difference? First of all, let's get this straight. In this story, did it say that the father chased the son or daughter into the new country? No, did not. Let him go. That is the truth about Jesus and about God according to the Bible. The perfect love lets people go. God lets people go into their hellish life if that's what they choose to live. God does not chase anybody into their sin. God cannot do that. He lets people go. That's called free will. If God were to chase, then there would be no free will. So God allows people to go, just like the father allowed the prodigal son to go. Now, was the father there when the prodigal son went poor and starved and was stricken with the famine? No. So is God there with you when you are experiencing the hellfire of a situation you should not be in? No. Is God with narcissists who are causing horrible destruction all over the world as they say, I've got God on my side? No. God is not with them. They are in a hellish place alone. There is no God with them. At least not the God that you want to be with them. That's for sure. All right. So that's the clear difference right there. First, understand that. The Father stays. God stays in the same spot. God is. And he has his invitation. He does not chase. He has no need to. All right. So, number two, the difference is this. In the story, the prodigal son, or it could be a prodigal daughter, turns and in the heart makes a reconciliation before even trying to go back to the path they were once on, saying, I messed up. I went to a place I I shouldn't have been. I have sinned against my father and against heaven. I'm not worthy to go back to the place I once was. This shows a heart that is repentant. This is what repentance looks like. Now, narcissists are not able to repent. They do not repent. They don't believe they do any wrong. They do their wrong, and because of the twisted version of reckless love of modern Hillsong and Jesus culture, they believe that their wrong is right and that God is somehow with them as they destroy people's lives and destroy things and damage their own lives and have children out of wedlock and all kinds of horrible things and they believe God is with them. God is not. That's the difference. And there's no repentance in their heart because they're not turning from that. They have no need. People have given themselves an excuse to not have to repent anymore. Why repent when we always got God on our side no matter what hellish thing we're we're accomplishing? We got God on our side with it. No. All these things are hellish. Right? And so, in the story... The difference is, is that in the heart, the, 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 young, the young boy or the girl repents by saying, I have sinned and goes back to the father and says, I have sinned against the father. I've sinned against father. I've sinned against heaven. I'm not worthy to be your son. And then you are welcomed back onto your path, into your moral place again, into your place of values, where you belong in your relationship, reconciling your relationship with the Almighty. This is what the ancient text says about the ancient understanding of God 
and God's love and how God does not chase. And this is why it's important that you and I should understand that narcissists who say they have God on their side are full of crap. They're delusional and you do not want to be caught up in their delusions. So stay away from them, first of all. Number two, there's no need to chase them. That is not what perfect love looks like. Perfect love does not chase anybody. Perfect love lets things go. And if it comes to dealing with toxic relationships, thank God they're gone, right? Let God deal with them. Now, God is the God over light and darkness, over good and evil. Make no mistake about it. However, you're on one side or you're on the other. You're either hot or cold. Pick your side. Don't be in the middle, right? Be in the light or be in the darkness, but be somewhere. God has a plan for those in the darkness. I assure you, God has a plan for those in the light. It was established since the beginning, right? In the beginning, God said, let there be light. He separated the light from the darkness. This was before the sun was even created. The sun wasn't created until Genesis 3. So what's he talking about? Light, darkness. It's, it's, it's talking about principles in the ancient text of the Bible. God established the principles of light and darkness. And the difference is, is light he called good and darkness he called absolutely nothing, which means it's the opposite of good. But the importance is that he divided them, separated them. They're divided. You and I need to be divided from the hellish experience that we had with narcissistic abuse. We need to make our way back to our path. If we need to ask forgiveness for making our way to the dark side, then by all means, do that. Whatever it takes to get back onto your path, away from toxicity. Listen, I want to be a part of your healing journey. And Fee, I hope that this answers your question as to the difference. I really do. Leave your comment. Let me know your thoughts on that. And as I was saying, I would like to be part of your healing journey. Visit www.jointheroyalwe.com where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one time with me over the phone. We could do FaceTime consultations or text message consultations. Again, www.jointheroyalwe.com. Also, every Monday night is Royal We Live Chat. This is where the community comes together. We ask questions, answer questions, even take phone calls for free so long as you know that it's a live show. And Saturday mornings, that's tomorrow morning, actually, 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time is Royal We Fellowship. This is the all-new uh, ancient literature Bible study as it pertains to understanding this world is toxic and narcissistic. It's unlike any other Bible study you've been a part of. Join me every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for Royal We Fellowship, and I'll be back with more videos for you right here on the Royal We.